Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's video is going to start with these two canisters from the Dollar Tree. They are the ones that have the little indents in them where a label can go. And I'm going to go ahead and give them about three coats of paint with this chalk paint. You guys, drop me a comment below and let me know what you guys are doing in your quarantine. I'd love to know. I'm also going to give this large jar, also from Dollar Tree, about three coats of paint in the same white chalk paint. So for the tops of the canisters, I'm using this antique white acrylic paint that I picked up from Target. And I'm going to give each of the tops a coat, actually three coats of this paint. Took about three coats to cover it well. And then I'm going to go in with trail tan and a little piece of foam brush that I cut off of a larger Dollar Tree foam brush. And I'm just going to dab the teeniest, teeniest amount of paint onto the top of the canister. And that's just to give it a bit of an aged look. So that's what it looks like, not too much, just enough to give it sort of a rustic look. And now we are going to move on to the lettering. So the idea for this set came from a set that I saw inside of the Newark airport. And it was a complete set, it had everything. And for the coffee, instead of creamer, it said crema. Instead of sugar, it said sugar. And instead of coffee, it said coffee. So I thought that was so funny. And I would have loved to have had that set, but it was very expensive. So I decided I would just go ahead and make my own. And now I'm going to take this glass candle holder from Dollar Tree and I'm going to give it about three coats of paint in the same antique white. And that acrylic paint is from Target. Of course, this would be easier with spray paint, but all the spray paint I have left is in a metallic color. Now I'm going to use this little plate saucer from Dollar Tree. It's a little melamine paint plate. It's a little melamine plate that I'm going to paint with this white chalk paint. And I do go in with about three coats of the white chalk paint and then I dry brush it with a little bit of the antique white paint to give it a more rustic charm look. So this is how the candle stick holder came out. The very top of it is not painted because that's where I'm going to place the glue. Here's a closer look at how the saucer came out. So I'm just going to use some fix-all adhesive. They sell this at Dollar Tree and some hot glue to uh, glue the candlestick holder to the plate and then I'm going to weigh it down while it dries. So I found these shims that I bought a long time ago and never used. I picked these up from Lowe's and shims are different from paint stirrers. Shims are thinner and they're kind of cut in two and they slant. Uh, down at a different angle, but they fit together. So I'm going to use this Gorilla Wood glue and I'm going to glue these shims together. Also use just a little bit of hot glue. And uh, what I'm going to do is to make a tray. So however many or however large you want your tray to be will determine how many of these shims you will use. 
I put some together and determined how many I wanted for my project. So I'm going to do this for all of them. Then I'm going to take this Jacobian wood finish stain from uh, Minwax. And this is the darkest one, I believe. I don't know if they have a darker one than this, but I really like the rich finish that this stain gives. I was wearing a, like a respirator mask and I had windows open because obviously I am doing this inside. Ideally, you would stain outside, but I couldn't. So I had a fan on the windows and my little respirator mask. So I'm just painting on the stain with a foam brush and then using a paper towel to wipe off the excess stain. I really, really love that rich color that this stain gives. I know not a lot of people use this particular stain in their crafts, but for me, I really enjoy that that rich color of the Jacobian. So drop a comment below and let me know if you've used this stain before and what you used it for. So once it was all dried on all sides, I have this extra piece of cardboard and this is what I'm going to use as the base for my tray. So I'm just going to line up all of these shims and all of these shims will form the base of my tray. And I'm basically just going to go ahead and glue them to the cardboard. And I will be using a mixture of the Fix-All adhesive and the hot glue. And I'm just setting some heavy objects on top as I go to help press it down and help it seal. Then I'm going to take this straight edge and just cut out the form of the tray from the cardboard. So now that that's done, I'm ready to attach the ends or the sides, I should say, of the tray. And for this, I want to make sure to have some painter's tape on hand. And again, I'm going to adhere these with Fix-All adhesive as well as hot glue. Now I'm going to take the painter's tape and I'm going to wrap it really tightly two times all the way around and this will help to keep the sides pushed in until they adhere the way that I want them to. Now that it has set up a little bit, I turn it over. This is the bottom of the tray. And I'm going to use four of these wood beads. I got these wood beads from Joann's a while ago, during Christmas actually. And these four beads are going to be the feet of the wood tray. And I love that they are already stained. They're already the same color as the rest of the project. So it just makes it more cohesive. And I just attach those with hot glue. And that's what we have so far. I decided to take this coffee bar sign that I got from Dollar Tree a while back. Never did anything with it. And so I wanna use it for this project. So I'm going to remove the satin hanger and then I'm also going to remove the cardboard backing. 
And what I basically want to do is replace the background of the sign. Now it has these plastic coffee beans inside. So I want to grab a few and set them aside because I'm going to use them for staging my final product later on. Then I'm going to use a regular staple remover to take some of the staples out. And I'm using these background sheets of paper from this activity pad from Dollar Tree. And you know what? I think it looks good with all three. This is the red one, obviously. And then there's a whitewash one. I'm gonna show you how that one looks. Looks good. And then there's another one that just looks like uh, stained wood. And that also looks good. So let me know which one you prefer. I just went with the whitewash one, but I think any one that I would have picked would have looked good. I'm going to put the beans back and fit the paper, the wood paper to the frame, cut off the excess and glue it in. And then I'm going to attach the cardboard back to the back of the frame. And that's what it looks like. Let me know what you think about the whitewash paper. So this is all of our projects together. Here is our beautiful wood tray. I just love that rich color that the stain gives it. Here's our sugar container, our crema container, and our coffee container. <laughs> the little pedestal that has the saucer and the glass candle holder, that is not food safe. If you do want to put food on that, you might want to put a doily down or um, something else in between the plate and the food if you're going to use it for like muffins or cookies or something like that. I just staged it with a cup of coffee. So thank you guys so much for joining me today as I made my little coffee tray, my little coffee bar. I hope you all are staying safe and taking care. I hope to see you all again very soon for my upcoming projects. Until then, take care everyone. Bye.